Hey guys, what is going on? It is Gear and here, and in today's video, we are gonna be discussing Eden Zero episode 15. Sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So, without further ado, let's get right into this Eden Zero episode review, which I will admit is quite an interesting episode, of course. We learned a lot more about Hermit's power, and it's an interesting episode. So at the beginning of course it picked up where it left off in the previous episode where we are surprised that there are two Homerers. So of course as the episode goes into it, it looks like it is revealed that the Homera of course that the crew know that look like her, she is the real one of course because she starts acting like her normal self and the, of course imposter one is someone different that looks like she snuck into the crew of course to try and get some information so that she can join Jamilov which Finally, I got that side guy's name. His name is Jamilov, which is an interesting name, but uh, it sort of suits a villain like him. So, as the episode was going on, of course, it looks like now Jamilov is getting pissed off because he's thinking, of course, about that two homer thing is dragging on and he just wants to have action, death, and everything. So, literally, what happens is as Homura, of course, the real Homura is talking to the fake Homura, of course, about what is your mission, what do you want to do, of course, why did you force me to be in a prison when I was logged in? Because she had to be in a prison when she logged in, of course, and then she had to escape a day later and she had to try and find out information about Shiki and the crew herself, which it looks like she's very good at, so thank goodness she can do that, of course, because then she probably would have been lost in this digitalist world. So she reunited with the crew of course, but it's weird, why would somebody do that to Homura? What objective is it that they had, so they had to sneak into Shiki's group in order for them to fulfill their objective? What was their objective? Why did they need Shiki's crew and what is their main goal? Well, before they can get into that of course, like I said, the side guy Jamilov just goes on a little bit of a, I should say a rampage, he's just pissed off that he's dragging so long, so he starts destroying people, buildings, humans, even monsters and he's just going on his little tantrum you will say and of course as he is doing that well it looks like he starts to uh, cause a lot of destruction and um, let's just say the fake Homura in that destruction of course starts running away the real Homura of course was chasing after her and Shiki is now versus Jamilov yet again but uh, when we of course see Shiki trying to punch Jamilov it looks like Jamilov is uh, using a lot of cheats in this game because it looks like he has maxed out his stats, he's maxed out his defenses, his literally everything and he's got an invincibility hack that literally makes him invincible to any type of attacks and he can't be damaged whatsoever. So that is very bad because Shiki is giving all of his attacks, all of his gravity ether gear but none of it is working against him just because he's got that invisibility glitch on him. So right now it is a dire situation of course because Shiki can't land one attack. Then it goes to Homura of course. She's chasing after the fake Homura and it looks like they both use of course their let's just say their animals to start running away of course. One, the Homura chasing over the fake Homura of course and it looks like the fake Homura is actually revealed to be an agent of the Galactic Intelligence Agency. So it looks like we are introduced to an agent for the first time ever and she was trying to sneak into Jamilov's inner circle so that she can let's just say capture Dracon, who is the most evil guy in the Sakura cosmos. He is literally scum and his people are scum. So she tried to sneak into that network. She used Shiki and the crew as like bait so that she could actually go into the network of course and get close to Draken and probably arrest him. So it was interesting that she had to use Homura's identity and it looks like her ability when of course she was using an account is that she's able to mimic the original account users personality, their way of looking and literally their memories too. And it was also revealed that the fake Homura is not a guy, it's also a girl and it looks like she's got some interesting power. So as they were chasing her of course she had a gun out saying, now that you know my true identity you cannot of course live so she started shooting her gun at Homura. Homura of course using her ether gears, she was easily able to deflect all of the bullets but it looks like that was her real objective because her objective was to shoot the branches above Homura, make the monster trip and then use her sniper to finish off Homura. 
which of course Humura, well let's just say she is a badass for a reason. So as the sniper bullet was going towards her, Homura combined both of her Ethergear swords and she was able to deflect the bullet right back at the agent and just before it hit the agent she logged out of course and let's just say she just disappeared so the bullet hit no one and then it's interesting to know what the agent looks like when she logs out because in the game of course she's got this a normal face of course but then when she logs out she's got this monster like humanoid face where she literally doesn't have a face at all so that is very weird we might just see her again later on in the future episodes for Eden Zero of course because it'd be interesting to know more about the agents and about how they have to go through like protecting the Sakura Cosmos from villains like Dracon and his crew and everything so it'd be more interesting to know more about that and hopefully we'll find out more about that in the future. Then it goes back to Shiki versus Jamilov. So it looks like of course Shiki like I said before he's still being pushed back because Jamilov has this invincibility glitch but it looks like Wise, of course, it looks like he is actually starting to step up to the plate because they were discussing, of course, saying if Jamilov is using cheats, well, why don't we use some of our own cheats to help boost Shiki so that he can defeat Jamilov? So, of course, Wise, he reverted back to his normal form finally, so he's finally a guy. And, of course, it is a rule that if anybody uses cheats in the world digitalist, they immediately get banned. So of course, why is not caring about the planet, of course, and not caring about him getting banned or not. He starts to hack into the system, of course, using his ether gear, and he starts to, let's just say, reverse the invisibility glitch for the Jamilov guy, so he can start doing some damage towards him. But as, let's just say, Wise is doing it, Hermit notices, of course, that Wise isn't the best programmer, because, let's just say, in a gaming world, the number one thing anyone wants to do if they want to do cheats and everything is programming so they have to be a great programmer in order for them to understand the code change the code and manipulate the code because that is literally power in that world so Hermit of course after knowing that she says that fine what I'll do is I'll help you get rid of this Jamilov guy because he's starting to mess around with the place of course and she starts to intervene saying fine I'll use the hacks but it will be on your account just as Jamilov is using his cheats each time he logs in, another person gets banned. So what Hermit is doing is the same thing as him. She is using cheats, but she's using it on Wise's account so that she doesn't get banned, but Wise will. So of course Wise accepts it, saying of course like he's got no attachment to the planet. So Hermit starts to use her... Well, we start to see why Hermit is called the Mind of Eden Zero. Because she starts to use her, I should say her programming skills. And it was very sick to see that she was able to multitask and change so much programming so quickly. And she was such fast when she was doing it. Then what happens is it looks like she was able to reverse the invincibility cheat on Jamilov. So of course now he's no longer invincible, but he does have his max stat. But what Hermit does to Shiki is she transforms him into a Kaiju so that Shiki can actually do some damage to Jamilov. So of course as Shiki transformed into a Kaiju, well of course Jamilov used his own cheese to revert Shiki back to a normal human being. Then it kept going back and forth about Hermit using some armor, Jamilov reversing the, of course that, so it actually cancelling each other out. And of course there was a funny moment in there which I won't go into of course, but it was a funny moment. Then of course what happens is as they of course are discussing it, it looks like Jamilov uses his final cheat code, you would say. He uses a The World Annihilation program to destroy both the city and everything in it. And the countdown was 3 minutes before, let's just say, the full program could be complete and everything would be erased in that area. Of course, Hermit said that she can't do anything about it because it is literally a World Annihilation program. So once it gets executed, nobody can stop it. After Shiki heard that, of course, and after he saw some of the NPCs starting to disappear in front of his eyes, Hermit was saying, of course, that they're just data, so they don't, know, of course, really have souls. But Shiki, of course, through his lungs, he said that they are not just data. They are humans. They are, well, actually, they're not humans. They have hearts. So literally, they have hearts. They have feelings, just like humans do. So why are they treated differently to humans? So he starts to fight back for the people in Digitalist of course so he starts to attack Jamilov and it looks like Jamilov is thinking well of course my stats are maxed out so you can't really attack me but there's one thing Jamilov didn't take into account 
The fact that the person, when they log into Digitalus, can also bring their real world abilities into Digitalus. So let's say for example, Jamilov is, has maxed out stats but his maximum number that he could reach would be about 999 defense. Whereas Shiki's attack power in the real world is about 2000 to 2500 as Hermit said. So in the planet world Digitalus of course, given of course that it also enhances the power, it would be around 4500 attacks and let's say if you have max health around about 10,000 it would only take Shiki about 22 hits of course for you to be fully defeated and that is what happens of course because Shiki then goes into attack Jamilov is starting to get hurt now from this because he's starting to realize that Shiki is not a normal person he is able to use Etagia and able to hurt him so of course now Shiki is launching a counter attack and he uses his gravity frenzy fist to defeat Jamilov which was so satisfying because I really hate that guy of course he's such a big head hacker who probably looks like a disgusting guy in real life so of course now as he was defeated he logged out of course and the town was saved because what happened is as he logged out Hermit was able to reverse the programming so that everything would be back to normal of course and everybody could be saved so everyone was saved in the town and of course Hermit Throughout all of this was showing no emotion which was very weird. Then what happened of course is the crew go back onto Eden Zero, Hermit is finally in her normal body but again she's got no heart because as sister and of course witch say, Hermit is back but she's got no heart just like she used to do before because we see a little bit of a flashback that Hermit actually wanted to be friends with human. She had these red cheeks as well which you guys have been letting me know down below so maybe that has something to do with Hermit probably not having a heart and just being so, let's just say, so down, you would say. It's very sad of course to see that and of course sister and witch want to know what happened to Hermit after they were disbanded by Ziggy. So of course after that it goes back to the crew, they are all in the meeting room of course discussing about Hermit, discussing about uh, how what they should do next and of course as Hermit said, she said she wanted her real body to be left at the Iron Hill where all the heroes were and she'll of course do some little maintenance on the ship and then go back to the digital as well. So of course Shiki just was gonna go talk to her of course but just before he went it looks like some emergency signals were going off around the ship and it looks like Jamilov, the real version, hacked into Eden Zero's ship and was just messing around the ship so he was turning it upside down and literally hacked into their security. So it looks like Jamilov is actually a well-known hacker in the Sakura Cosmos. He is one of the top five and he stole 10 billion cherries, which is like money there, when he, of course he was hacking in. So he's like one of the top five hackers in the entire Sakura Cosmos. But like I said, he looks like a nerd and it's sort of like a fitting personality for such a scumbag in a digital world. So the episode ends off with Shiki of course just sitting down looking at Jeremy Love so pissed off of course because he is laughing giving that annoying laugh and the episode just ends off just like that. You guys let me know down below did you enjoy Eden Zero episode 15? What was your favourite moment? And of course are you let's just say give me guys your theories about Hermit why is she still so down even after returning back to her body? Let me know down below. And of course if you enjoyed this video make sure to drop it a like and of course subscribe to the channel so you can join this awesome community. Thank you guys for watching this video, take care and peace.